Let's pray. We'll see if we can begin to do something tonight. Father, we love you, and uh, we thank you for this time of season, even with the sickness and everything else that accompanies it. Father, we thank you for what this time of season represents in the life of a Christian, and that is the human birth of your Son and our Savior. And Lord, without that, we'd have no hope. We'd not be able to smile. We'd be able to laugh. We'd be condemned to an eternity in hell. But because you had already set that in stone at the foundation of the world, we have hope and we can have peace even in the midst of trials and troubles. And we can just smile and go on with our lives and say, God's still in control. And uh, I'm just trying to follow. And Lord, we pray that you'll be with all those that are sick all those that are having health issues and problems and all those things, people that are hurting all over. Lord, I pray that you'd just mend hearts, that you'd mend the physical bodies, and, Father, that you'd help us to grow our spiritual body as well. And may all this done bring honor and glory to you, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Proverbs chapter 6, I uh, uh, had thought about doing something different tonight. And then I thought, no, I, uh, I'm still reading, started over reading through Proverbs, 1st December. How many of you started 1st December reading through the book of Proverbs? Uh, one, two, three, four. That, that's not real good odds this morning or tonight. Uh, that uh, uh, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 27, we only got four, that, that's, that's not real good odds, but um, I challenge you to read through the book of Proverbs um, every month, and whatever day of the week, uh, month it is, read that chapter of Proverbs, and so today is Proverbs chapter 6, so if you haven't read it already, you can get your reading in for today, uh, but there's a lot, a lot of good things in Proverbs, and uh, uh, and I challenge you to to do that in Proverbs chapter 6 verse 1 he says my son if thou be surety for thy friend thou hast stricken thy hand with a stranger thou art snared with the words of thy mouth thou art taken with the words of thy mouth anyone know what that word surety means anybody in here ever co-sign a note for somebody else anybody in here ever co-sign a note for somebody else and wind up having to pay it all That's what he's talking about. That's what he's talking about. If you're going to, uh, if if you're going to do that, if you're going to be the guarantee for something, for especially for a friend, and that's by the way, that's the way you you lose friends too, a lot of the times. Um, man, if it was that easy to get rid of kinfolk, wouldn't it? Uh, the um, um, I had a guy tell me one time, don't ever co-sign a note that you're not willing to make payment on. Uh, and I said, okay. And I've co-signed some notes over the years, and I've had to make payments on them. And all you can do is just smile and make that payment and uh, keep right on going uh, because you're, you're, you're snared with that. You're hung with that, okay? And so be very, very cautious about co-signing notes for other people. I'm not saying that there's not a time you should do it and there's not a time that it needs to be done, I'm just saying you ought to put a lot of prayer into it before you volunteer for that. Uh, I, when we started church in Hobart, I had a man come to me and said, I have a $10,000 CD that's about to mature, and I'll pull that out and use it for collateral to buy the church building. And I said, nah, no, uh -uh. not going to happen. I'm not going to let you do that. And he said, but that's what I want to do. And I said, uh, but I don't think that's what God wants us to do. Number one, it's not your responsibility to bear the load of co-signing that note and guaranteeing it. It's the church's responsibility. And number two, I think the church can stand on its own and take care of that. And so I wouldn't let him do it. And years later, he said, you know, I don't know what I was thinking, but uh, he said, I probably should have prayed about that a little more before I offered to do that. And he said, I'm glad you, you turned me down on that. Uh, because I didn't want him to feel like he was hung in something. Okay, I didn't want him to feel like if, if something happened and, and he got ready to leave church, I didn't want him to feel like he w didn't have the ability to go. And I didn't want him to think that he had a more vested interest in church than anyone else. Okay, That's just, This is why you need to read through the book of Proverbs every month. Okay, Because up until tonight, 
probably the majority of people in here had never thought about being surety for thy friend and by that being snared in a trap. Okay, so be very careful about if you co-sign for someone. In verse 3, he says, Do this now, my son, deliver thyself. When thou art come into the hand of thy friend, go humble thyself and make sure thy friend. Give not sleep to thine eyes, nor slumber to thine eyelids. Deliver thyself as a roe from the hand of the hunter and as a bird from the hand of the fowler. You notice nowhere in there did he say, Go to him, make sure he's going to make the payments. Go to him, make sure he's going to pay that off. What he said was, you set your mind to it and you figure a way out of it and don't sleep, don't slumber until you've delivered yourself out of it just like the, uh, the a row from the hand of a hunter. Okay? Get yourself out of that because it's just going to cause conflicts and cause other problems. And then he says, here's how you learn. Go to the ant, thou sluggard, and consider her ways and be wise, which having no guide, overseer, or ruler... Provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. Y'all ever tried to get rid of a red ant bed? You know, the, the, the red ants, the ones that hurt really bad when they sting you? We bought the house in Granite. There was one, uh, the driveway came down, there was uh, still a chain link fence, divided a, another lot we'd bought with it. But right at the end of that chain link fence on the sidewalk, there was a crack in the sidewalk. And they had made a red ant mound there. And I mean, it was everywhere. And every time you'd go out and I'd go out and walk around that fence, I'd have to either go way out around or jump over that ant bed or step through it or whatever. And so I thought, this is ridiculous. And so I went to Atwoods and I bought some stuff and I put on that ant bed. And just like it said it would, in about 24 hours, that ant bed was gone from that spot. And one day I was out there, crawled underneath Brendan's pickup, and looking at it, and I thought it had a U joint bad, and I crawled underneath that pickup. Guess what I found? Where they had moved to. And, and that whole army of ants moved from there to there. Without a ruler, without a king, they just did what needed to be done. And that's the way we are to be in serving the Lord, right? If the only time somebody's going to serve the Lord is if the preacher tells them to, you're missing the point. Okay? Uh, you, you ought to be able to justify your own Christian life on your own uh, by, based on your relationship with Christ. Uh, provideth her meat in the summer and gathereth her food in the harvest. Uh, don't wait until it's over or it's too late and then say, well, I need to, I need to do this or I need to do that. Uh, and he, he's fixing to start talking about lazy people, and that's why he's talking about the ant. The ant can carry, what, 50 times their weight? Yeah. I mean, uh, you ever saw two of them little bitty ants carrying a dead cricket? That cricket may be four times as big as they are, but it, they still got it, and they're still carrying it. They're still going after it. And so gather your food while there's time and, and, and do what you need to do. And then he says, How long wilt thou sleep, O sluggard? When, when wilt thou arise out of thy sleep? Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth, and thy want as an armed man. First time I read through the book of Proverbs, I thought that said is one that travaileth. Well, a woman, the Bible says, travails in childbirth. I thought so is one that's going through a hard time. But he says, no, one that traveleth. You ever went on a trip and it cost you more than you thought it was going to before you got home? You know why? Because Proverbs is true. So shall thy poverty come as one that traveleth. It's expensive to live on the road. It's expensive to live on the road. And uh, I remember a guy one time owned some real estate property in Ada. And uh, he said, come go with me. I said, okay, where are we going? He said, well, I got a rental over here. And he said, they haven't paid me. And I want to go find out why. Now, the guy was also my pastor at the time, but. I uh, went over there, and I mean, he knocked on that door, and that police knock, boom, boom, boom. A little bit hurt. What's that? Who is it? I'm coming. 
I comes and opens the door, and you can tell by looking at him, he just rolled out of bed, and it's like 2.30 in the afternoon. College kid, just rolled out of bed. Opened the door and walked in, and there was another one asleep on the couch, another one asleep on the floor. And he said, do you have the rent? Okay. Oh, no, we've been having a hard time. He says, 2.30 in the afternoon, you already could have put in a full day if you just got up and went to work somewhere. There's three of you here. And if the three of you would have worked two days, you could have paid the entire amount. But you didn't, so now you gather your stuff and out that door right now. Well, you can't just kick me out right now. And he said, yeah, I can. Well, no, there's laws against that. You have to give me time, and you can't kick me out. And he turned around and looked at me, and he said, uh, weren't we going to tear that window out right there in the front? He said, you can stay if you want to. It was in January. He said, you can stay, I guess, if you want to, but we're fixing to tear that window out and put new windows in this house. And we have the front one and the back one, so it's going to get a little breezy in here. And they started gathering up their stuff, and they moved out. I said, that was a little harsh, wasn't it? He said, that's the fourth time in six months they've been over 10 days late with their rent. I think I've gave them plenty of warning. But people want to lay around and sleep all day and then complain because they're broke. It'd be nice to sleep all day, wouldn't it, Trent? It'd be nice to... To, 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 to just come home and, and have a regular job and not have to stay up all night and, and uh, it, it'd be nice but you can't sleep all the time and provide for your family it doesn't work that way we have a generation in case y'all haven't figured this out yet we have a generation of, of I started to say men but that's not the right word we have a generation of males that are in their late 20's to early 40's that think their sole purpose in life is to stay home and play video games. That's it. They don't work. They don't have a full-time job. They don't. Uh, now, Brendan was telling me the other day about some guy that was playing a video game, and he was getting paid for it abundantly, and he was making a really good living at it. I said, well, why aren't you getting paid for it? He said, I'm not that good. But some guy that was streaming himself or started streaming playing on video game and and they you'd so much you'd have somebody sub in or something anyway the guy like it was he'd been playing for like a thousand and something hours and he still had a whole bunch to go he said I, I'm gonna be streaming the rest of my life at this rate but so there is a possibility you can make money at that okay I don't want to mislead anybody but the truth of the matter is if you're spending more time sleeping than you are working there's probably something going on in your life we got 24 hours in a day. I remember a guy that was very wealthy told me one time. I asked him, I said, so how did you get to the place you're at? Just because I wanted to know. And he said, well, my old daddy told me years ago, son, <coughs> it's okay if you just work a half a day. But you need to make up your mind whether it's going to be the first half or the second half. You put in 12 hours. You can work the first half or the second half of the day, but you need to decide which half you're going to work. That either means you got to get up early or you got to stay up late, but you can work either one. And so um, it, and it, it, a, lot of, a lot of sleep will cause a lot of other things. And then a uh, naughty person, uh, a wicked man walketh with a froward mouth. He winketh with his eyes, speaketh with his feet. He teacheth with his fingers. Frowardness is in his heart. He deviseth mischief mischief continually he soweth discord therefore shall his calamity come suddenly suddenly shall he be broken without remedy I was told very early on in my Christian life to always be very careful how you treat the church because Christ gave his life for the church Someday, if they decide to remodel, when they take the sheetrock off of the wall that my desk faces, written on that sheetrock behind those studs, it says, be careful how you treat the church. Because I wanted to write that on that wall, because I knew where my desk was going to be, and I wrote that on that wall before we sheetrocked it and covered it up, because it reminds me every time I look at that wall to be careful how you treat the church. To be careful how you treat the church. And, uh, uh, and so when we have people 
that try to sow discord and you can tell that's their only purpose in being here, mm -hmm. then something needs to be done. Because the Bible says, and he says over in the book of Romans, mark them which cause division among you. Okay, But we ought not to, to be sowing discord. Um, it, <laughs> it amazes me the little details that people think everybody needs to know when really it doesn't matter to anybody but them. Well, you know, the preacher wasn't even there at 3 o'clock when I went by the church the other day. Yeah, I was. I was just in a different building, my fifth wheel. Okay? Um, I came in one day and somebody said, Well, it's about time you got here. You sure have showed up late today. I said, Well, I'm sorry. Number one, I didn't know we were keeping score and anybody was counting my hours. But if you are, did you count the ones that last night when I was on, on the phone at 1030? See, you have no idea what I do when I'm not here. I said, so if we're going to keep score, let's keep it honestly. And I just turned around and walked off. Okay? <clears throat> Watch out for those that have a purpose of sowing discord. You don't have to have a conversation with everyone, okay? If, if, if their intent is to sow discord, and I'll tell you how to deal with that, the best way to deal with that, if someone comes to you and says, did you hear about what, da da da, da and they name them, just stop them and say, whoa, right there. Let's you and I call the preacher, put it on speakerphone, and we'll settle this. And 99.99% .99 of the time they'll say, oh, I don't have time for that, or oh, we'll do it later. Or what? No, they don't want that accountability. They just want to spread things. And so be very careful of those that sow discord. And he's fixing to get into it a little bit uh, in uh, uh, the next three verses there, 16 through 19, which is where I really wanted to try to get tonight. Uh, the, the, it's, it's funny, the subtitle in my Bible Above that, I guess they had uh, some uh, a Catholic guy taking some notes or something when they were making this Bible because the subtitle of my Bible says Seven Deadly Sins. Well, maybe, but there's a lot more than seven. And if you're a born-again child of God, none of those seven are going to send you to hell. Now, God might kill you for it, okay? I understand that. But I kind of got a kick out of it when I read it. And uh, uh, so he says in verse 16, These six things doth the Lord hate. Okay? So keep that in mind. All right? He's fixing to name seven things here. But these six, the first six, these six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, and seven are an abomination unto him. So he hates six. But all seven of them are an abomination to him, especially number seven. And so he starts out and he says, a proud look. Look over at Psalms 101 and verse 5. Psalms 101 and verse 5 says, Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart will not I suffer. You see, most of the time when people come and want to tell you some little juicy tidbit of gossip, it's because it's going to make them look better. That proud look, okay, that proud look. Uh, <laughs> and then the second one is a lying tongue. Kind of goes along with a proud look, doesn't it? I've said for years, there's two sides to every story. Two sides to every story. The truth and the side you hear first. Because most of the time when someone comes to tell you a story, they're not going to tell you the honest truth from an unbiased perspective. They're going to tell you what they were hoping or wanting or trying to get you to line up with. Right? Because a lot of times a lying tongue goes along with a proud look. They're trying to make themselves look better, and as a result, they tend to stretch things some. Just tell me the truth. 
what was the Doe uh, car 54? Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts, ma'am. Uh, commercial come on for that the other day. They're showing it on me TV, and I said, "Just the facts, ma'am." Bryson looked at me and he said, "What are you talking about?" I said, "Sit down here. We'll watch this show. I'll tell you what it's about." And he said, "Ah, it's okay." <laughs> a proud look, a lying tongue, which Psalms chapter one twenty and verse two speaks to that again, uh, because. God wants to make his point, right? Um, 120 and, and uh, verse 2 says, Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and a deceitful tongue. Okay? Deliver my soul, O Lord, from lying lips and a deceitful tongue. <laughs> David knew that he had messed up. David knew that he needed deliverance. And one of the things that he asked God to deliver him from was from lying lips and a deceitful tongue. And yet in the book of Acts it says that David was a man after God's own heart. But it doesn't mean he was perfect. Okay? But what made him a man after God's own heart are verses like that where he said, Deliver me from my lying lips and a deceitful tongue. He knew he needed some help. He wasn't one of those that just went around and said, Oh, well, it's okay. Yeah, I kind of got that twisted up, but that's all right. Okay, who did you damage when you got that twisted up? All right, and so be careful of a lying tongue and then hands that shed innocent blood. Hands that shed innocent blood. One of the reasons I quit going dove hunting is because, I, any of you in here ever eaten dove? You know the best way to eat dove is you wrap it in bacon. I mean, you got to pluck the feathers off of it and all that stuff and gut it and all that. And then you wrap it in bacon and you put it in the oven, and you bake it at about 325 degrees for about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, and then you take it out, and you peel the bacon off from around the outside of it, and you eat the bacon, and you throw the dove in the trash. <laughs> but after, after I got saved, I read that, and it said, hands that shed innocent blood. Okay? Now I'm not I'm not a vegan by any means. I'm a meat and potatoes guy and, and always have been. And God gave us everything on this green earth to eat, right? There's nothing that won't be bad for us as long as we bless it. Okay? Uh, there's been time or two I've had to bless it twice just to make sure I wasn't going to wasn't going to make me sick. But um, but and it, it, to me it kind of speaks to the fact of of going out and and killing something and then not doing anything with it. You know, there, at this time of year in southwest Oklahoma, there are deer laying all over the sides of the road. And if you get to looking, a lot of them, the top of their head is just covered in blood because they didn't shoot that animal for the meat. They shot it for the horns. And they'll take a chainsaw and cut the horns off of it and throw the carcass in the bar ditch. That's wasting, uh, shedding of innocent blood. Why do you want to do that? That's shedding innocent blood. And there again, that's what makes murder wrong. Will God forgive you for murder? Yes, he will. He forgave David. But you still shouldn't shed innocent blood. We have an accountability to God. And then he gets into this, and he says in verse 18, A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. You ever saw somebody that just kind of sits around and tries to figure out how to get one up on somebody or get over on somebody or, 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 or do something wrong to somebody. Okay? What is it he says in Psalms? Sinner, uh, uh, my son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. Okay? There are people that sit around and, and deviseth wicked imaginations. They sit around and they plan for uh, things that are against the will of God and against God's calling. There are people, and I know y'all are going to think I'm crazy, but it's a true statement. There are people that visit churches with the sole purpose of causing problems. Am I right? Had to go through that a time or two, huh? That's their only purpose. They don't want to learn. They don't want to change. They don't want to get right. They just want to cause problems. 
And so he says, those that deviseth wicked imaginations. And they let their imagination run wild with them. And this is wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong. And, 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 and it, it causes problems. And then he says, feet that would be swift in running to mischief. Those same people usually are the first ones to start trouble. Now, I tell people all the time, I'm, I'm fairly thick-skinned. Uh, we were moving yesterday, and I said something about uh, uh, Gina was pushing the buggy in or out one. I don't remember which. And I said, spend half my time holding the door for you. Come on, let's get this done. I was just giving her a hard time, and she knew it. And she kind of looked at me, and she said, well. And I said, now you know why I had a hard time keeping hands, don't you? I used to tell him all the time, don't let this old man fool you. Uh, uh, when I'm going to borrow my hammer one day, Brother Mike, I said, go ahead. But I'm telling you right now, you put that thing in your left hand, it's going to beat you to death because it'll swing a whole lot faster than you're used to. <laughs> but there are people out there that look for a way to cause strife or argument. I, uh, I, I've, I've been chastised once or twice since I've been here in moving forward with some things. And I'm not here to run to mischief, and I'm not here to devise wicked imaginations, but I am here to grow a church. And that's our purpose, and that's our goal. Okay, but sometimes when someone gets upset with me, instead of coming and talking to me, they go talk to everybody else. Well, I can't fix it then because you've ever already given everyone else your opinion and made me the bad guy most of the time. Okay? So be careful about that running to mischief and that devising wicked imaginations because I'll go back to what I said earlier. Christ gave his life for the church. And, and, and it means a great deal to him. And he goes on in verse 19 and he says, A false witness that speaketh lies. A false witness that speaketh, speaketh lies. I am still waiting on the day when people go into court and they do not have to put their hand on the Bible and swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Because it's coming. They're going to do away with the Bible. They may have you swearing with your hand on the Koran, but they're going to do away with the Bible. If the Lord doesn't come back pretty quick. But almost everyone still recognizes that the Bible is the truth. And that's the reason they have to swear on the Bible. Tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. But boy, there's sure a lot of people that don't do that, do they? I don't keep up with politics. You all know that. I, uh, uh, I, I sometimes watch a little bit here, watch a little bit there if, if there's something going on that, um, that, you know, that I think I need to keep updated on or something. But it's amazing to me and what I have saw of some of the things that have taken place in the last two years in our country. And they call these people into this committee. And, and some of them are not under oath and some of them are. And I've heard over and over where someone would say something and the chairman of the committee or whoever it was in charge of things would stop him and say, I need to remind you you're under oath. <laughs> in other words, I know you're lying. You might have stop right there. He said, I need to remind you you're under oath because some people don't care anything about the truth. They want to tell whatever's going to make them look best, whatever's going to promote their agenda, okay? In the short time that I've been here, there's been people that have left this church and went and told someone something that just absolutely was not true. And it shouldn't be that way. And it blows my mind that people can read through Proverbs and read this and he says six things the Lord hates and that's the number six is speaking lies. A false witness that speaketh lies. Okay? If you get mad at me and leave this church because you're mad at me, go out of here and tell people he's a jerk and he's a smart aleck. Okay, I'm okay with that. 
but don't go out of here and tell them I preach out of a crazy Bible and I don't believe the right doctrine and that we're messed up on this or this or this when you really have no idea. Okay? And so the Bible hates those that speaketh lies. And then it amazes me that he said six things the Lord hate and seven are an abomination to him. So he hates all of those things. And then here's the abomination. What does it say? He that soweth discord among the brethren. He that soweth discord among the brethren. <coughs> I have one, two, three, four, five, six. I have been a member of six churches in my lifetime. I didn't get saved till I was 32, so in 30 years I've been a member of six churches. Okay, One of those I resigned because my mother was in bad health and she needed my help. My sisters could not make her get up and do what she needed to do and exercise and she was going to get in really bad shape before long, and so I resigned the church, and I would work all week and get to pick up and go to Granite and rehab, help her rehab her knee because I didn't have to help her. All I had to do was walk in the door and say, Hey, Mom, how are you? And she'd say, Oh, I'm working this machine. She'd hear my pickup pull up. She'd turn that machine on and start working that knee because she knew. And my sister said, I don't see how you do that. I said, It's just part of life, you know. Uh, and so I resigned that church for that. But um, one, two, uh, we had to close the church in Ada after I got hurt, and so that was kind of a different deal. And so, uh, and I hadn't resigned here yet, so we can't count that one. So half of the churches that I've been a member of, I left to keep from sowing discord. Okay? Last church I was at, Chairman of Deacons and I did not get along, and he was my niece's husband. But we didn't get along um, because he was power hungry, and it was coming down to the end of things, and it was fixing to be a um, showdown, for lack of better words. And I told my wife, I said, I'm not doing this. The church is too valuable to me. She said, then just resign. And I said, that's what I plan to do. And so I did, because I would rather resign my position and have to go find another job than to split a church. Okay, I would rather resign my position and have to beg for food on the street corner than to split a church. Because I believe God's going to really hold people accountable that try to split a church or that do split a church because Christ gave his life for it. And so it, it, when, when it comes down to he that soweth discord, that's number seven that's an abomination unto him. I don't want to be an abomination to God. I want to be what God wants me to be. 